Hi everyone, it's James here. Welcome to another video. I'm going to do something a bit different today. I'm going to be looking at uh, the roots of Supergrass. So, um, Supergrass were a British band uh, who came up in the 1990s. They were a three-piece, uh, later expanded to a four-piece. Just recently, a new vinyl compilation has come out of a lot of their hits. Uh, I don't have that. This is um, a previous best of that I picked up uh, many years ago now. Very cool little um, seven-inch. You can see the band there. And um, Supergrass, I suppose, they were associated with the Britpop uh, years. Um, I suppose most people would have referred to them as Britpop, but I don't think they sort of sat particularly easily uh, in that category. Um, I was not a big fan of Britpop. I wasn't into Oasis. Uh, I quite like Blur, um, but there was m most of those bands I was not too keen on. I did, however, really love Supergrass. And... Um, the more I listened to them over the years, the more I came to realise that it was probably because of their influences. You know, I could hear a lot of classic influences in their music. I mean, Britpop always drew on those classic influences anyway. You had the Beatles, the Small Faces, you know, the Kinks and everything. But Supergrass had other influences as well. They seemed to me to be <clears throat> more diverse and they seemed to draw on a lot of stuff from the 1970s uh, as well as from the 1960s. And... Um, the 90s were a period uh, of kind of record collection rock, really. You had these bands like Primal Scream, Spiritualized, who drew a lot on kind of 60s garage music and, you know, all kinds of things going on. It was sort of expected of you if you were a, a guitar band in the 90s and you wanted a bit of credibility and you weren't just going to be a kind of what they used to refer to as a kind of landfill indie band, uh, was that you had an eclectic range of influences. And I think Supergrass did that better than anyone. And, and I think unlike Oasis, who were quite derivative, and um, I think Neil Gallagher used to wear his influences very clearly on his sleeve, Supergrass were quite good at bundling up their influences and disguising them, and uh, maybe it was a more uh, subconscious thing, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, so I picked out ten records, and I'm not saying for certain that, you know, I mean, I don't know the guys out of Supergrass. I have read interviews with them over the years, so I think a couple of these are pretty much, you know, I know for certain that they're right. A few of them are just, you know, records that I've listened to over the years, and occasionally I just listen and I go, yeah, I think Supergrass have listened to that record. Because when you hear Supergrass's music, uh, you hear certain cadences or ideas or textures or guitar sounds or, you know, vocal harmony sounds or whatever. Um, so anyway, see what you think. Uh, you might not agree with me, but I think these ten artists, 10 bands, I think you can hear their, I think you can hear their influence on Supergrass. Uh, so let's get started. So Supergrass were a classic three-piece uh, until they expanded later into a four-piece. I think they were always a four-piece. There was a hidden member, uh, Gaz Coombs' uh, brother, I think his name was Robert Coombs maybe, uh, was the keyboard player who didn't appear in the lineup officially until the last couple of albums or maybe even the last album. No, no, the last two albums, I think. But they came onto the scene as a three-piece, which was quite different from other bands like Oasis and Blur. You know, there are a lot of Britpop bands who use the four-piece um, formula or mould. Supergrass were a bit different, they were a three-piece, and they also had uh, a very sort of punky sound in their first album. And I suppose, so the first influence I would definitely say uh, would be the jam, really, um, because they were a kind of punk, you know, new wave type three-piece. Um, I could have chosen the Buzzcocks, I could have chosen the Sex Pistols, of course, uh, because the early Supergrass had a very aggressive guitar sound and uh, a certain kind of um, rough edge, I suppose. Uh, but I think the jam is quite a neat one because, like I said, they were a three-piece. Now, what was great about Supergrass, I think, is that they, they sort of merged the trio punk new wave thing of the jam with a kind of 60s sensibility, which of course drew on the Beatles, because all those bands did. But there was something more like the Monkees about Supergrass. And I think at one stage, there was even talk of them being given their own TV series, um, which didn't come off, fortunately, because I think it would have probably ruined their career. Um, but they were seen as being quite, um, you know, youthful, boyish. They had big personalities. There was that video of them pogo sticking around London, you know. And I think the viability of them as some kind of group of TV you know, like a kind of indie boy band, was spotted by somebody, but I don't think they agreed to it, and it was a good job. Having said that, I don't think Supergrass ever quite did live down their image as the, as the monkeys of uh, Britpop, and they did try to expand, uh, and they did artistically successfully expand their music in later years, but most people still associated them with that early incarnation. So anyway, I'd say, broadly speaking, Supergrass were a mixture of the jam and the monkeys. 
Right, okay, and um, I think the Kinks also played a part because Supergrass were quite a witty group. They were quite light-footed. Lyrically, they were not like Ray Davis, I suppose. Their lyrics were not as distinctive, but they did have a witty edge to them and a slight kind of musical thing going on, which, again, it sort of set them apart from other groups of the period. Just like the Kinks, were sort of, they were slightly outside um, the herd, outside the pack in the 60s. They kind of carved their own space by being quite quirky and being quite humorous, and I think Supergrass did the same thing. So I think the Kinks uh, were definitely an influence uh, on the band. Now, as we get further into Supergrass's career, so the first album, the second album, getting into the third and the fourth albums, the influence of this group uh, became much more prevalent. This is T-Rex, and I'm talking about the electric T-Rex now, not the Tyrannosaurus Rex, not the folky um, band that Mark Berlin had before, but the kind of glam rock T-Rex. Particularly on the fourth Supergrass album, there are some songs that really do sound like that classic kind of T-Rex uh, glam boogie kind of sound. I mean, T-Rex were hugely influential anyway. I mean, Oasis completely stole the riff from uh, Get It On for Cigarettes and Alcohol. But I think Supergrass did it in a, cl uh, in a more clever way. Their music had a kind of glam rock, um, good time spirit to it. And I think a lot of the bass lines and the drum rhythms and the way that the uh, vocal harmonies worked with the guitars uh, was really redolent of um, T-Rex. And I think <clears throat> with that, side by side again i think on the sort of on the fourth album there are some songs which which really sound like um ziggy era david bowie i think they were also influenced by earlier bowie as well uh, i read interviews with gaz coombs who said that you know he loved uh, the man who sold the world you know the first few songs on the fourth album life on other planets uh, i think there's a definite david bowie vibe and um, okay pink floyd i think were a massive influence on supergrass um Songs like, uh, is it called Late in the Day, which is from the second album, has a very, very David Gilmore-y um, guitar hero kind of moment in it. But the uh, the album Road to Ruin, or the Road to Rouen, because it was meant to be a pun, um, the first song on that album really sounds, it, it, it's got a very um, Atom Heart Mother kind of vibe to it. If you, if, you, if you listen to it, you'll hear it. It's that kind of orchestral, slightly Vaughan Williams-y kind of feel. But I think the metal era, um, Pink Floyd, were a big influence on Supergrass. I think David Gilmour's guitar sound uh, is, is you know, an integral part. Well, not David Gilmour's guitar sound, it's Gaz Coombs' guitar sound in Supergrass. But I think, um, you know, if you listen to some of his guitar solos, you can definitely hear uh, that kind of blissed out, bluesy, reverby kind of David Gilmour um, guitar thing going on. So, Pink Floyd. Um, Okay, so this is Wings, Paul McCartney and Wings. Obviously I could have done the Beatles, but I think I think Supergrass were probably more influenced by Wings, really. Now when I say Wings, I mean the mid-1970s incarnation of Wings. So we're talking about, you know, Wings Over America. It's just that kind of really upbeat, hard-driving, hard-rocking sound, but which is, it's really commercial as well and really tuneful. And I think Supergrass did use his, uh, horns later on a little bit. Um, but it's that combination of, I don't know, 1970s um, arena rock kind of sound. Really tuneful, really melodic, but kind of hard driving and heavy, which they never really lost that. And in fact, as late as their final album, um, Diamond Hoo Ha, they were probably as heavy at that point as they'd ever been. You know, they got kind of really heavy on the last album. Uh, so I think Paul McCartney and Wings were definitely an influence on them. Now we move on to maybe, okay, so the last three, I don't know, this is really subjective, but I hear Supergrass uh, in the Steve Miller band. This is, um, this is the album number five, and Supergrass had a kind of cult rock aspect to their sound. They were able to do that kind of mysterious, slightly swampy sounding, enigmatic, sort of early 1970s vibe. There's a song on this record called Industrial Military Complex Hex. And it's a brilliant song. Anybody who knows Steve Miller's records will testify there was a certain atmosphere in his music. I don't know what it was. It was his vocal sound. It was the way that the uh, instruments were arranged. It was the production. <clears throat> but it was never generic 70s rock. There was always another thing going on, a certain kind of atmosphere, a certain production, a certain ambience, a certain sound on the instruments, slightly enigmatic sounding. And I think Supergrass had that in spades as they got further into their career. Um, I can definitely hear the Steve Miller band uh, in their sound. And 
Dickens. Also, um, this is Spirit, and this is their classic album, Twelve Dreams of Dr. Sardonicus. And again, much like the Steve Miller uh, record, you know, I can hear influences in this, which I think went on to inform Supergrass later on. Again, it's that kind of enigmatic, slightly psychedelic, rocky kind of quality. Not full-blown psych, um, but melodic rock, which takes some interesting twists and turns with very subtle guitar textures kind of interweaving and just things that catch your ear and uh, just a very slightly otherworldly quality. And um, yeah, I think Supergrass shared that with Spirit. And the final one, Supergrass definitely had their absolute sort of American soft rock sound. So this is Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young uh, and the album Deja Vu. You know, you hear it in some of the vocal harmonies they did and some of the more kind of blissed out, um, not exactly pastoral music they did later on, but kind of, you know, from the fifth album. There's tracks on that which are very kind of mellow. They've got a sort of mellow, hippie kind of West Coast vibe and... Um, I'm fairly certain, you know, I read interviews, you know, going back through the years that guys Coombs and the boys from Supergrass were definitely fans of that 70s sound. I mean, they were huge fans of Neil Young uh, and I could have chosen a record by him as well because they were big fans of Neil. Uh, but I went for Crosby, Stills. Crosby, Stills and Nash, but, you know, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young uh, as, being a key, uh, as being a key influence on them too. I'd be curious to see what other people think. You know, have I got that right? Have I missed out any key influences? Are there any here that you definitely disagree with? That's my take on it anyway. Uh, Supergrass and the influences uh, which uh, brought to bear on them. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye-bye.